YouTube. Welcome to Geek Shh. So as we proceed on our journey of pairing the M4 Mac Mini or M4 Mac Mini Pro with the perfect companion in the form of a hub or docking station, we have seemed to have stumbled upon a new contender. Now I receive a lot of emails from companies wanting me to review products, which I always appreciate, but sometimes I find myself overwhelmed with offers for products which I deem more of the same rather than original. But when I received this email from Waukees, I knew immediately this was the one that I wanted to share with my channel. So full disclosure, Waukees sent me this docking station for review, but I will not be showing them my video before it goes live on YouTube, and I also would not cater my opinions to suit their needs. So as soon as you open the box, you're greeted with a detailed manual. Then you have to pull out the unit, remove the plastic, and open up the bottom to find the rest of the accessories which include two thermal pads, a flathead screwdriver, and a position screw for the NVMe drive, which all seem to have fallen out of the envelope they originally was enclosed in. Then in the box, you have two USB-C three-foot cables, and then you also have a six-inch USB-C cable. Now, what seems to be missing or not included is a power brick, which makes me think this unit was actually made by Apple. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Now back to the unit itself. Feels good in the hand, even though it's kind of light. Seems like smooth, good quality plastic. Coming in at about six inches in height, a little over five inches in width, and about 536 grams in weight, which equates to about 1.18 pounds. Now on the front of the unit, we have two USB-A 3.0 ports, both supporting 10 gigabits per second, a SD card reader, as well as a micro SD card reader, both supporting the highest speeds, which is 4.0, a USB-C 10 gigabits per second port, and last but not least, you have a power button. Now, in case you're wondering, pressing the power button does not disturb anything plugged into the unit, only the monitor itself. Now on the back, we have a headphone jack, a five volt power input. Now during testing, I seen this unit pull about 1.3 watts during sleep, 7.8 watts during idle, depending on the brightness of the screen, and 11.7 watts during heavy use. Now we also have a USB-C input to connect to the M4 Mac Mini. Now you do not need to use the USB-C input and the HDMI input to get a picture on your screen, only the USB-C input alone. Then we have the HDMI input. Then we have two USB-A 3.0 ports, both supporting 10 gigabits per second. And we have a slot for the NVMe. And being that this is a fanless design, the rigid cover helps with the natural dissipation of the heat. And we also have two buttons on the top to control the brightness of the screen. So now we're going to go ahead and remove the bottom and place our M4 Mac Mini inside. Then we can plug the USB-C cable in both devices. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the SSD cover. Pull out our NVMe drive. Now remember, it makes no sense to overly invest in an NVMe in terms of speed because it's capped at 10 gigabits per second. Now in terms of capacity, you can go all the way up to eight terabytes with this particular unit. Now we'll remove the tapes from one of the thermal pads and place it on top. Cover that bad boy up and we good to go. All right, so before we get into the speed test, let's go ahead and look at the resolutions available for the display. You do have 720p, which is the default and which is the one I like to keep it on, but you also have 1080p and also 1600p. Then it does come with a color profile, which is good to see. And then you also have a refresh rate of 60 Hertz being the max, which basically being the only refresh rate available. All right, now let's go ahead and start the speed test. Now we're going to do the one gig and the drive is called podcast, which we're already on. Let's go ahead and get things started. Now we are capped at 10 gigabits per second, which basically means we're the maximum we can go to is a thousand megabytes per second as and also as you can see we are in the range of that let's go ahead and do a five gig test on that drive now let's see what we come out with 
All right, we're doing a little better now at hovering around 976 megabytes per second. And for the read, we're coming in at about, all right, 899. So we are definitely around a thousand megabytes per second mark. So after a week of using the Wojkis M5, here's what I think. In terms of functionality, you have not only two USB-A ports in the front, but you also have a SD card reader as well as a micro SD card reader, as well as a USB-C port for quick docking station access. Then in the back, you have extra USB-A ports as well as a power input and also a HDMI for when you're using this unit with computers other than your M4 Mac mini. You also have a five inch screen on the front that becomes very useful for a surplus of reasons, such as showcasing album art for when you're listening to your music or showing photos of family and friends, or maybe even watching the latest episodes of TV shows or movies on Plex. But personally, my favorite use case is for when I'm using it for the poker tables. But hey, that's just me. Now I know people are gonna ask me about the heat. So yes, the rigid cover does help naturally dissipate the heat that the NVMe drive produces. So it does get pretty warm, but as you can see, the rest of the unit stays cool. So overall, with this plethora of functionalities and its sleek retro design of computers I grew up admiring from afar, I gotta go ahead and rate this one a 10 out of 10. Job well done from Waikis. Now, it could have been better if it had a 40 gigabit per second version, but don't need to worry, they are planning on doing one even better. They're coming out with an 80 gigabit per second version in a few months. Now in the description will be all the Kickstarter information. This will start selling for an early bird price of $99, which I consider a steal. And the 80 gigabit per second version will have an early bird special of $199. Now, if and when they send me that 80 gigabit per second version later on in October, I'll be back to showcase that version as well. Anyway, my name is DeMarco Payne for Geeks. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And last but not least, may the good news be yours. Introducing Macintosh. It does all the things you'd expect a business computer to do. It does a lot of things you wouldn't expect a business computer to do. And it does some things no other business computer has ever done before. Of course, to do all this, you will have to learn to do this. Macintosh from Apple.